Hi, I'm Tammy, and I'm here to answer three questions. Why do you think that interventions implemented before third grade are most effective? Why should teachers use to, what should teachers use to plan lessons and activities? And what are the benefits of assessment for young children? The first question, why do you think that interventions implemented before third grade are most effective? There are two important reasons to implement interventions in a child's education before third grade. The first is that early intervention offers the child additional strategies and assistance to help them move through their developmental the, through their development to their fullest potential. When intervention is implemented, it gives the child personalized instruction that has the potential to help them overcome their disabilities and disadvantages and supports their learning on their own terms to ensure their greatest possible growth in learning. When started early in their life, they have the ability to impact their emerging growth of brain pathways and synapses. The second reason I believe intervention before third grade is crucial is in how the lack of intervention can impact the child's self-image and self-esteem. If no accommodations or modifications are provided for the stu student early on and they are either excluded from mainstream education due to their delay or disability or they are included but not given any respect and treated less than due to their delay or disability, all or any of these can have devastating effects on their sense of self, sense of value, and sense of having a place in the world. Once a child begins to believe they can't overcome their delays or disabilities because no one has offered assistance, they can feel defeated and this can have severe repercussions in all areas of their life, which is why early intervention is not only the most effective, is not only most effective, it is also imperative. What should teachers use to plan lessons and activities? Teachers should plan lessons and activities based on their observations of what each child is doing and needs to do next. For instance, if the lesson is vowel recognition by sound and by sight, the student who has mastered this task should be given additional activities to expand on their knowledge, and the student who has not yet mastered these concepts needs to be given activities to assist them in gaining the knowledge. Teachers are in constant assessment of each student through their daily observations, and this knowledge needs to lead the lesson plans and activities. It is the teacher's responsibility to make the lesson plans and activities meaningful to each student. Making all students learn at the same pace is of no value to either end of the developmental spectrum. For the student who has already mastered the concept, it has it is a waste of their time, which can be used for further instruction. And for the student who is struggling with the concept, they will be left behind, leaving them with a wide range of negative feelings and reactions. It is the teacher's responsibility to make sure that their lessons and activities meet the needs of all students. What are the benefits of assessment for young children? The benefit of assessment for young children is that they will experience instruction that supports their individual development level and understanding of concepts. Teachers who are constantly using their interactions and observations of their child students to assess what the child already knows, what the child needs to add to their knowledge, and is alert to any developmental delays through their observations can do the most to make their instruction benefit the student. When a teacher can readily recognize possible delays, they can then take steps to have the student evaluated by an intervention team who can support the student. A teacher who uses assessment tools and child work samples regularly can create lesson plans and activities that support the current instructional needs of each of the students. Especially in young children, instruction needs to be refined to provide the missing information the child needs to continue moving through their developmental stages, both cognitively and socially. When a young child receives this type of personalized interactions and instruction from both caregivers and teachers and from parents, parents barriers to their growth are minimized and enriching activities and experiences catered to their immediate learning interests will provide them with great gains in growth and knowledge acquisition.